I seen Michael Jordan play before I came to play with the Bulls. You guys seen him play. He was a horrible player. He was horrible to play with. Man, what the f you talking about? You were fighting for the starting spot from Brad Sellers. The Chicago Bulls fans know Brad Sellers. No disrespect to Brad, but he wasn't that great. Yo, what's up? It's the Ronnie Ray Show. We're back with the segments. The segments are back. We got off my chest. Uh, ungrateful ass Scotty Pippen. Remember the classics. We got me against the world. Remember the classics. Tupac. Random List is my favorite uh, UPN shows. And much respect is going to Hakeem the Dream Elijah. So, yo, subscribe now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy these segments. Let's go. All right, off my chest, man. Off my chest today, man. I, 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 I didn't want to do this, man. I didn't want to do this, man, because this guy is, is probably one of my favorite basketball players. Y'all know I'm Bulls fan for life. So a Bulls fan for life. So to hear this is, is, is a debacle in my life. It's a debacle. Scotty Maurice Ungrateful Bitter Ass Pippin. Man, what the fuck are you talking about? He was just on Stacey King. Give me the hot sauce podcast, man. Stacey King, I love Stacey King. But give me the hot sauce podcast. He was on there. And he said a lot of stuff. But this one thing just stuck out. LeBron will be the greatest statistical guy to ever play the game of basketball. And there's no comparison to him. None. So, does that make him the greatest player to ever play the game? I'll leave that out for debating. Because I don't believe that there's a great player. Because our game is a team game. And one player can't do it. Like, I seen Michael Jordan play before I came to play with the Bulls. You guys seen him play. He's a horrible player. He was horrible to play with. He was all one-on-one. -on -one. He's shooting bad shots. And all of a sudden, we become a team and we start winning. Everybody forgot who he was. Horrible how, Scotty. Horrible how. So this is what we're doing today. We're going to figure out how Michael Jordan was before you came. Because people are all like, he ain't start winning until Scotty got there. No, he ain't had no damn team. He was the only guy playing. But let's go back, man. Let's go back. Michael Jordan was drafted number three in 1984. For him was Lajuan and Sam Bowie. They still talk about Sam Bowie about that. His rookie stats were 28.2 points a game, 6.5 rebounds, 5.9 assists, 196 steals, and 69 blocks as a rookie. The only other players to have stat lines like that in their first year is Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he's whack. Those numbers are better than Kobe Bryant's MVP numbers when Kobe won the MVP the one time. He made the All-Star team. He was rookie of the year. And he played all 82 games. That's a horrible player. He started every game, too. That's going to come in effect in a minute. Michael's second year, third game of the season, gets hurt, breaks his foot. He's out 62 games. He comes back with 17 games to go. They limit his playing time. He still played because he made a promise to the city that he was going to make the we were going to make the playoffs. As long as he's on the team, they're making the playoffs. They got in by the skin of their damn team. A losing record. And they had to play the best team in the NBA at the time. Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics has won 17 damn championships. But they consider that team to be the best team they ever had. Michael Jordan comes into the playoffs against them. First game, 49 points. Second game, the, the, the record setting, 63 points. Third game, 19 points. And people were like, uh, uh, see, see, he don't know what he's doing. No. I watched that game. You know what happened? They never talk about this. They fouled Michael Jordan out at the top of the third quarter because they knew they were going to have a problem. You can't, you can't have Larry Bird and them get beat by this dude. So get this dude out of here. That's how lethal Michael Jordan was. The third season, the third season. The epic third season, he comes back. He's ready to play. Now, Doug Collins is the coach. First game of the season, he scores 50 on the Knicks. Easy. He went on to score 37.1 points a game. 3,049 points for the season. Nobody's done that since Will Chamberlain. Probably nobody would do it again. If you, well, these three-pointers, you don't know what they're going to get. 5.2 rebounds, 4.6 assists, 236 steals, and 125 blocks for a guard. And he's a terrible player, Scotty. He made the all-star team. He made the all-defensive team. He didn't get the MVP that year with those numbers. You know why? Because the league had given Larry Bird the MVP three years in a row. It was Magic Johnson's turn. So they had to give it to Magic. They had to give it to Magic. All right, man, we're going to give you this, Magic. But this guy over here in Chicago, no, we're going to give it to you, Magic. They got swept again by the Boston Celtics again. 
They realized they needed help because this guy wasn't going nowhere. And the city, would, they would have told the city down if he didn't get no help. So then they draft Scotty Pippen. They draft Scott Pippen. His name was Scott Pippen. Nobody knew who the hell he was. He got drafted by the Supersonics. Scott Pippen got drafted by the Supersonics. The Bulls got Olin Polonies. Next thing you know is a trade. They get Scott Pippen in the thing. And I'm like, this skinny ass. I don't know what they're going to do with this tall, goofy motherfucker. He went on and changed our mind. But I'm going to tell you something. Scotty Pippen was a horrible player, too. Because Scotty Pippen's stats were way worse than Michael Jordan's stats. Let's go down Scotty Pippen's rookie stats. 7.9 points a game. 3.8 rebounds. 2.1 assists, 95 steals, 55 blocks. Played 79 games and didn't start in none of them. You didn't start in none of them. You were fighting for the starting spot from Brad Sellers. The Chicago Bulls fans know Brad Sellers. No disrespect to Brad, but he wasn't that great. Now, who's horrible, Scotty? Who's a horrible player, man? The point is this. Scotty's still mad about the last dance. Scotty said... The documentary showed Michael Jordan as being a selfish player and a horrible person. It's all on video. He made sure he says it's all on video. Just watch it. I watched that. I still watch The Last Dance on a regular basis. I watch it at least you know, like every three months. I pop it in. I watch all 10 episodes like it's nothing because I'm a Bulls fan for life. I watched the video, man. And yeah, Mike, Mike was a horrible person. And he was shitting on people. He was selfish as hell. But you wasn't? Come on, Scotty. Let's go down the list with you on this again, man. We're not going to talk about the migraine game because, you know, you're going through stuff. Your dad died, so we'll we we'll let that go. I'll talk about 1994 when you ain't go back in the game. Scotty ain't go back in the game because he said, I'm the man now. I'm right going. No, Cool Coach hit this shot six times in the season. We're giving it to him. Well, I ain't going in. What? Cool Coach hits the shot. Nobody says nothing. In the 98 season, coming in from the championship in 97, he's supposed to do surgery. He didn't want to do it. He wanted to miss it half the year. And then on the last dance, he says, I was on my summer vacation. What are you what are you talking about, bro? And the last part, he, he was defending. I watched the, the the Give Me the Hot Sauce uh, podcast. He was defending Jerry Krause, but you were dogging Jerry Krause on the thing for not paying you. Dude, you the one that signed that contract, man. They told you not to. Bottom line, bottom line, Scotty, I don't think this has nothing to do with nothing. You saying Michael Jordan's a horrible player because you're mad. You're mad at the last dance and you're mad. His son fucking your wife. His son is fucking your wife. That's all. That's all it is. Just say it. I was, that's why I watched the whole thing. I want to just bust out. He was a horrible player and blah, blah. And his son fucking my wife. I want him to say that. Honestly, I think if he didn't play with Michael Jordan, I don't think they they probably wouldn't have six championships. They they, they the best duo ever to me. But I got to say this. I, I'm sure Mike would have won some championships. I don't think Scotty probably would have won nothing. Because without Michael bringing that dog out of you, bro, I don't think you would have came. I think you probably would have been. Kendall Gill, no disrespect to King, Kendall Gill. Y'all probably like, who was Kendall Gill? Kendall Gill was a great basketball player. He was a good bas- really good basketball player. He wasn't great. He wasn't an all-star, none of that. He was one of the analysts for the Bulls. I was a fan of this cat when he was in Illinois. But he came in the league, and he wasn't really, he's kind of like a journeyman. He went to a lot of teams, man, but Kendall Gill was dope. No disrespect to Kendall Gill, man. Michael Jordan without Scotty would have got, got some rings somehow. He would have got something, or he would have had all the points in the game. LeBron probably still been trying to chase him. I just don't believe this is happening. My my favorite duo in basketball of all time. I not, can't even talk to each other now because Scotty's bitter because um, MJ's son is smashing his wife. Next second. All right, now remember the classics. Remember the classics, man. March 14th, 1995. Tupac Shakur drops the third album, Me Against the World, man. Come on. He dropped the third out while he was in jail. It comes out while he's in jail. I think the week he went in, that's when it happened. And that's when Michael Jordan came back on the 19th of March. The 17th of March, man. Sold over 200 some thousand copies, man. This album was everything. You saw that even on the album cover, Tupac looked serious. It wasn't about no thug stuff. Like, he done, he done grew up that fast. He didn't think he was talking about game banging, whatever. It's like, yo, this dude, Tupac was just, he owned it. He owned it leaning on the side. Like, I like the, the, the album cover was dope because it looked like it was just him after the world done boot blew up. That's a dope ass album cover, bro. First time hearing it. First time hearing it. First time I knew when I knew it was coming out, I heard Dear Mama on it. Like, we got this new Tupac song, Dear Mama. I'm driving to work. And it comes on. Do, 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 boom. Boom, boom. I'm like, yo, and then he be rapping. You know how Tupac be, be preaching. Man, heartfelt. I'm like, man, he, he, he done changed, man. He got it together. Album comes out, everybody's listening to it. First time I heard it, me and the homies was riding to Freaknik. We had, we're going to Freaknik. 13 hours down to Atlanta. 
And 13 hours back, we here, we listening to that at least 11 hours of the 13 hour trip there and on the way back too. I got tired of that album because I got back, everybody playing it. Yeah, that's all everybody did. I got this Tupac, man. Like, he got a new song. No, it was the same album, man. It's good. Favorite tracks, favorite tracks on it, man. It's just a lot, man. I, I go back and forth with this one and Machiavelli, which one is the best Tupac um, project. I, I'm, right now, I'm, I'm on this one, dude. Like I said, Dear Mama was incredible. They just had the documentary, which was amazing. This one made me do this. And there's a guy that asked me to do this. So, yeah. Um, If I die tonight, man, that, that's... <laughs> A coward dies a thousand deaths. A soldier dies but once. Boom, boom. <laughs> you niggas don't know me yet. Nice tonight. Uh, they say pussy in papers, hoards your power and pistol. What the fuck is that? He came in hard, man. He came in hard. They say pussy in papers and poetry your power and pistols. That's a piece for your ass. See that spit fly on my face? Me Against the World is a serious joint. Uh, so many tears, boom, that Stevie Wonder sample. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, I suffered through the years and shed so many tears. Temptations, man. Temptations? Yo, Mo B, man. I dropped that shit. Hey. Me and my cousin, my brother be singing that shit. <laughs> hey. Give him the finger. Like that video, too. He was in jail. He dropped the video. Young niggas I like. The cameo sample. She's strained. Oh, man, I love it. Yummy, the, the little thug. Yummy, man, who uh, killed that girl and they wound up killing him. I actually grew up. Down me up the block, not that far, but about a mile up west of where he where he got killed at. Lord knows, um, it ain't easy. I like that song. It ain't easy keeping it real. I take a shot at him to see I was long enough to face the madness. Nigga bag will upset me, race for heads. Phone call from a nigga from the other side. Two childhood friends just died. I couldn't cry. A damn shame. <laughs> when would it ever change? Arguments with my boo is true. I said more times with my niggas than I do with you. Come on, Pop. You ain't flowing on that, man. We got fucked the world. Has Shock G you try to tell you? I don't care in the back. Death around the corner. Outlaw. Come on, man. One song I didn't like, though. One song I didn't like. And it wasn't because of the song. It's the intro of the song. Um, Can't Get Away. The song Can't Get Away comes on. It's about domestic abuse. He's talking about guys beating the women. He shouldn't do it. That's a powerful message. But he started off. He like, what's up? It's Tupac. Like, he's on the phone. And he's talking to her on the phone. Now, this is 1995. There were no video phones. Tupac says, on the phone. What's up with your eye? Why you got your glasses on? What the fuck? How you see that, Tupac? I cut that song off every time. I'm like, this is crazy. Y'all just let this guy do whatever he wants to. Other than that, you're a genius, bro. You're a genius. The impact of the album, one of the greatest rap albums ever. I think it, this made him a legend. This made him a legend. This is before Death Row. I think if you would have kept down this path, I think he could have went around longer. Because if you just kept to this, like, no, nah, I'm going to stay right here, man. I'll just wait it out. But he had to get out of jail, and he did his thing. And he's a legend. He's um, iconic since this. But if he would have kept albums coming out like this, because everybody liked the, um, what's that, All Eyes on Me. And I'm like, eh, it's cool. I like it. And it's not my favorite Tupac album. It's between this and Machiavelli. He had time to to think. He I think he rushed um All Eyes on Me. I think he rushed it. But, but we ain't talking about All Eyes on Me. We talking about Me Against the World. Which is a classic. If you haven't heard it, you'll deprive yourself. Classic guy, man. They say pussy in papers and poetry power and pistols. <laughs> I love that shit, man. Next thing. All right, here we go. Random list. We going random list and we hitting it this time. We going UPN comedies, man. UPN top 11. UPN comedies, man. We going with it. Number 11. I got to go half and half. Half and half. Rachel Truth, S. N. Atkins, Track to Women, man. I just, just, just really didn't, you know. It was all right. I just watched it. You know, black people on TV, you had to watch them off. <laughs> Tony and Lando and Dawn and Family Matters. I had to watch. Number 10, I'm going to Hughley's, man. At least Neil by herself gets them on the list. You know what I'm saying? They get them because she is so bad to me. Oh, my God. I need. I met her once. and Yeah, but she, she didn't pay me no attention. But, yo, she was cool. D.L. was funny. Reminded me of modern-day Jeffersons and... It was a decent show. I liked it. Number nine, one-on-one, one-on-one, Kyla Black, Flex Alexander. Uh, who was the guy that was getting all the work? I forgot his damn name. <laughs> Whoever played the brother. That dude was on everything. Why was he getting so much work back then? They say he was crazy talented and funny, man. I forget this guy's name, but he was on the show. If I was probably 10 years younger, I'd probably appreciate the show a little more. But number eight, I'm going, one, I'm going all of us. Going all of us. The Will Smith, the mock Will Smith life. With his wife and Jada Smith and the kid. 
Dwayne Martin and um, Elise Neal again. She's in it and Lisa Ray's in it. Oh my God, Lisa Ray shot town. Lisa Ray so damn fine in that damn show. It's ridiculous. Tony Rock was in it. He was the comic relief. Tony Rock was really funny on the show. And it just got confusing in the middle when uh, Elise Neal left. I don't know why. I still don't know to this day why she left. And then it got weird. And I'm like, that has nothing to do with the initial story. So it kind of lost me. But it's entertaining. I do laugh at the show. So number seven, everybody hates Chris. Everybody hates Chris is is comedy, dude. It's, it's old school comedy to me. I, I feel like this show could have been put out in the 90s and it would really kill. But it was like kind of like a decade late to me. So I, I like the show. I watch it if it's on. I don't make it a must to watch it because I'm like, damn, man. Everybody does hate this dude. He does not win at all. <laughs> like, he does not win. And he's a kid. Like, it's different on watching Curb Your Enthusiasm because Larry David is an asshole. Chris is a nice kid. And he get, he get fucked over every damn episode. So, yo, number six, I'm going Malcolm and Eddie. Malcolm and Eddie kind of brought me to the network because I think that came out around the same time as Moesha or the year after Moesha was out when it was like black TV was it. Eddie Griffin, Michael Jamal Warner, big fan of Michael Jamal Warner from the Cosby Show, Eddie Griffin from Def Jam. So to see them paired together as the odd couple type thing and I'm watching the show and I'm like, these these shows on UPN made me want to be an actor. UPN and WB because I'm like, it's, it's work for black people. And everybody black was getting shows. And that was a cool one to watch because they were young bachelor dudes and they were dating these chicks and they were like just trying to make their way. And I liked the show, man. The first season especially, I thought that was that was some real comedy to me. It got later on, it got kind of it got weird when they got the bar and all that stuff. Like I kind of forget most of those, but I really focused on the first season. So yo, number five, I'm going in the house. In the house, LL Cool J. I like this show, man. I, I thought that show was cool when it was on NBC. When Debbie Allen was on there, it was cool. And I'm like, they canceled it? They canceled it? Where's it going? So they brought it over to UPN. And Debbie Allen left the show. And then um, they kept Maya Campbell on the show. I'm like glad because she was gorgeous back then. She one of the women that I had to go to Hollywood and meet her. So she was on the show. Yeah, Ken Wayne's on the show. Yeah, Alfonso Roberto on the show. So it kept the show on for like five years. Number four. I'm going Girlfriends. I'm going Girlfriends number four. Y'all like, why are you going Girlfriends number four? That show was greatly written, but it was for women. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm a fan, but it was for women. You know what I'm saying? I digged it. It got a little dramatic. I got tired of Dr Jones sometimes, but I loved all the women on the show. You know, Golden Brooks, you know, Jill Marie Jones, Paige White, and uh, Tracy Ellis Ross. Those four women, their chemistry was dope. And then when they ended it, it was like, oh, uh, how they ended it? And Jill Marie left, and it's like, uh, uh. It was all right. It just felt like they were forcing the show, so they didn't leave at their peak. Number three, I'm going with the Moesha spinoff. I'm going to Parkers, man. The Parkers is funny to me, dude. I can put that on Netflix or whatever streaming service it's on, and I can watch and just laugh. It didn't get me like that at first. I thought it was hokey, but I took it for what it's for, and Countess Vaughn is hilarious. Countess Vaughn is hilarious, dude. And, like, this girl has range. It's sad that she stereotyped to be that girl. She was the opposite of that when she was on 227. Like, she's crazy smart and all that, but the girl could sing, and she's funny. So, yo, she was perfect. I'm glad they spent her off, man. One of my favorite spinoff shows at number three. Monique is in the show, too. Monique is, is, is funny in that. And um, Six from Blossom was in the show. So, yo, man, I like me some Parker. So, I watched the Parkers. So, the Parkers on my list is number three. Number two, y'all gonna be like, number two, what's number two? Number two is the Eve show. And y'all like, why Eve's number two? First of all, I like I like me some Eve. I love me some Eve, dog. Eve, Eve, sexy to me, man. And I love the theme song of the show. Missy Elliott did the boom, 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 boom. You get pumped up by that. And number three, I was on the show. Like, yo, I was on the show. Do you remember the show when Jada Kiss popped up? I was in line, I shook his hand. They like, we gonna give you a role because they wanted to make me J.D. Kiss's entourage. And he's like, I got my own entourage. He's like, all right, we gonna put you in. You gonna shake his head when he come through. I'm like, yo, I'm here and I'm on the show. So I, that show wasn't ever gonna be in a high regard to me. So I don't care. If y'all think it's number 11 of this list, it's number two on mine. So, yo, Eve is number two. I love the ensemble cast. I love, I love, um, I love Eve. Rest in peace to Natalie. Um, played a friend, girl Ali Landry. Ali Landry, she was dope. Jason George was his name. Was in Barbershop. He was cool. <laughs> Brown Hooks is funny to me. Since Fat Beach, I've been a fan of Brown Hooks. And uh, even even the White Cat, I forgot the White Cat's name, but yo, he was funny too. The English guy, he was funny. So so honorable mentions. Um, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about homeboys from outer space and the cuts and whatever. I don't need to talk about that. So, yo, number one on the show, the one, I think it's probably the highest rated show on there. I'm going to say Moesha was number one. 
Moesha was number one. I love the cast of Moesha. Mo cast Moesha was dope. Uh, Brandy, I like Brandy. Like, like what y'all? Something about Brandy. I like me some Brandy. I, I ain't going crazy. I ain't gonna be at the concerts, like you know, screaming and shit. But I'm, I, I'm a fan of Brandy, low key. I'm a fan of Shaw Jackson. I thought she was funny on the show. Like I said, Countess Vaughn was hilarious. My guy, Lamont Bentley. Lamont Bentley, he was funny. The dude to play Miles, he was funny. So, yo, man, I, I like the fun. The parents, dynamic. Shirley Ralph, well, she killing it right now. Yvette Wilson, that was on the Parkers and that show. Yo, I'm glad she went from Def Jam to that. So to see that, I was more familiar with that setting as far as the family and stuff and how the people come in the house and stuff. So it made me feel like, okay, it's people like me on TV. I dig that. So, yo, I love that. And the funny thing about the show, I didn't like how it ended. I did not like how it ended. It's supposed to come back. I don't know what the hell happened. The last episode that they aired, Miles got kidnapped and they found the pregnancy test in the garbage can and somebody was pregnant. And then they ended it right there. So probably... It was like December 05, 04, whatever. I'm at a party in LA and I run into Lamont Bentley. <laughs> and I was like, hey man, quick question. Like, what's up, man? I said, man, what happened on the show? Oh, I don't know. I'm like, what the, they did it there. They just told us he ain't coming back. I'm like, damn. And uh, sadly, he passed away like about a month later. So I'm like, wow. So man, look, number one, Moesha, man. Rest in peace to um Lamont Bentley, man. And that's it. So what What numbers you get, huh? What, what are you trying to, you want to throw some homeboys in out of space in there? No, nah, not doing that. Put your list together and let me see what you got. Like I said, if you don't like my list, write your own damn list, man. That's it. Next segment. All right. Last one. Segment, this segment, much respect. Much respect goes to Hakeem Elijahwar. Hakeem the Dream Elijahwar. He's my favorite center. Of all time. Y'all probably like, man, what happened to Shaq? Man, what Kareem and that man? Look, man. Hakeem Olajuwon school, both of them dudes. <laughs> I don't care what you say. He schooled their ass, man. Hakeem Olajuwon, born January 1st, 1963, man. Nigeria became a professional basketball player drafted in 1984 to the year 2002. He played basketball, man. Drafted to be ahead of Michael Jordan. And nobody says nothing. And that's that's class. That's how good Elijah Wan was. The Bulls got Elijah Wan. I wouldn't even be mad. Like Mike had six championships, but we had Elijah Wan. I've been straight. He, he joined the team with a seven four dude. They call himself the Twin Towers. Ralph Sampson. They in there, man. They playing. And the second year he's in the league, they go to the championship. They go to the championship. They lost to the Boston Celtics team that beat the Chicago Bulls that year. Um, when Michael Jordan scored sixty three points. But Elijah Wan couldn't be stopped, man. Yeah, they got rid of Samson. They made Gary Elijah Wan team. Elijah Wan was the guy. He was the first guy I can remember uh, getting a quadruple double. I'm like, damn. He went out and got the quadruple double in points, rebounds, assists, and blocks. And they took the block away. So the next day, the next game, he did it again, but he got it in steals. So I'm like, yo, who was this guy? Who was this guy, man? The dream shake is iconic, man. And they won a championship in 94. 95. They like, man, what well, the Bulls are beating them and they play. Right, they they did have a problem with dudes. I don't know what to tell you. That that that's gonna be something to talk about later. That's a barbershop argument. But Elijah Wan was that dude. Cause when Michael Jordan was out and the Bulls wasn't winning, Houston Rockets took those two years and made it their own man. They went to the championship in '94. Played New York, best of seven. It was seven games in New York, and they were sabotaged. They were trying to sabotage these dudes because OJ was being chased by the cops. <laughs> shit was on, and you had to watch it on a little 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 corner of the damn TV screen because OJ was trying to get home to his mom. But they won it in seven games, man. I was like happy, but you know I, was, I like Patrick Ewing, but hey, I rather Elijah want to have it. Then the next season they got it. He wound up playing with his old college college friend, Fly Slam Pajama, uh, Clyde Drexler. They went to the championship in '95 and beat Shaq and them. They they swept Shaq and them. That that same season though, he won the MVP in '94. '95 they gave it to David Robinson in front of them just before they about to start the playoff series. Iconic game. He said that was my that's my MVP, and he went at him. He went at him. All the highlights you see him on day right, he just went off. Dream shake here, dream shake there. Fade away, block, dunk. Elijah Wan is that dude. He has footwork like a guard. That's what makes him phenomenal. He wound up um, staying there in Houston for a while, wound up going to uh, Toronto for a year, and retired from there, man. The best center of all time to me. He's so good as a center. Guards and forwards, go to, <laughs> after he retired, they were going to him to teach him the footwork. He learned that from being a soccer player, bro. He gets no love, but when his name comes up, nobody says nothing. 
And I like that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you can't even complain. That's what King Elijah won. Bro. And he was the only really real player on that team. He was the only star on that team. I don't think they ain't have an under all star on that team. Then they tried to group him up with Barkley and, and Scottie Pippen went there. And I'm like, eh, y'all too old now. You know what I'm saying? So he retired, man. And Elijah won. Yeah, he, his, his pastime is helping, helping uh, superstars with their post moves. And that's a great person to go to because he was the, he's my favorite center of all time. So much respect to Akeem Likes one. That's it. All right. That's the show, man. That's the show, man. Subscribe. Subscribe. Laugh, subscribe, share, uh, comment. Um, whatever you got to do, do it. You know what I'm saying? I need y'all. I need y'all support because we got more to come. Me and, me and, me and Brother Lamo going at y'all, man. We coming every damn week. We coming with it, man. We need these numbers up. So, yo, that's, that's the show. Shout out to Lamo. That's it. And as I always say, do it and it's done. See y'all next time. We out.